Welcome to Carver Conversations. I'm your host, Tiff Marshan from Night Carver Designs, and this is a saber tooth podcast, and I couldn't be more excited to be here. Head on over to sabertooth.com and sign up for their mailing list. They send out a coupon once a month for 25% off. You have 24 hours to use it, so you're not going to want to miss out on that chance. You can use our show code to save 10% off. The code is EM2CO. Head on over, sign up for the mailing list, and if you want to buy them now, EM2CO at checkout. Make sure to have that all in caps and on to the show. All right, today on the show, we have Mike Jones from Man and His Dog Wood Carvings, and I'm super excited to chat with him. We did have some Wi-Fi issues, so um, he is in a very, very remote area, and he tried to get the best Wi-Fi possible, but it was not kind for us. We did make it through it. But I do apologize for any sounds that may be a little bit uncomfortable to the ear. I did try to cut out just about all of them. Um, but, you know, I had to leave some in just to keep the context of the conversation. So with that fair warning, I think you're going to really enjoy the show. He has a great perspective on art and trying things and just really nice guy. So uh, I hope you enjoy it. All right. On with the show. Where are you uh, right now? Are you in your, uh, is it a game room I see behind you? Yeah, at the moment, yeah. It's sort of like where, where my, my workshop is, he sort of built this area, so it's just perfect. It's the only, the easiest place to get Wi-Fi for, for down here. If it was down at my workshop, I don't really have Wi-Fi <laughs> down here. So it's just uh, easier to be here and it's got a handy little room to use, really. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, that's awesome. So I was looking at your Instagram and I saw that you were, uh, sponsored by Wallace Tree Company, I believe it was. So is that just like a, a lumber yard that supplies you with wood? Yeah, pretty much. He was he was sort of a friend of mine when I first started, and he was sort of one of the first main guys I approached for, for timber. And uh, I was using him for you know a few years, and then he sort of approached me and said, "Oh, you know, we'll sort of, we'll, we'll sponsor you." He wasn't making any money off of me, you know. I sort of <laughs> sort of hassle him down on the prices of timber. And, uh, and he wasn't making any money so he was uh he, luckily he did say yeah you know we're, we're happy to sponsor you so um it was sort of the best thing I could get really you know yeah. not, not the best thing I could get but it was it was it was amazing to have you know for him to sort of say you know we'll, we'll sponsor you um so it's, so it's perfect yeah so now he just it's the easiest he's like a mechanical dismantle company so it's kind of big cranes big machines Oh, um, that's cool. So he's got the big large lorries for it and stuff. So yeah, so he gets to pick it up and, and, and bring it to me. And it just, yeah, it works out nicely. And he, he's just a great yeah. guy. So it's really, you know, I, I like to help support him and he obviously yeah. supports me. So yeah, it works out perfectly. Yeah, I was I was looking at that. And I was like, well, that couldn't be a better relationship, you know, to be sponsored by a company that can supply you with timber. Like, yeah, 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 you- yeah that is it. Exactly. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's perfect. You know, it's yeah. a perfect sort of partnership between it all. So that's beautiful. Um, and it works great. I just, you know, I just go down there, sort of pick out, pick out the few logs that I want. How long have you been an artist for? Or because like, I know you started your Instagram in 2017, but I could tell you were already doing um, stuff. Yeah, it's, it's uh, I was never really, I, I was, I was a tree surgeon before. So I suppose I've been doing this kind of around seven years now um full time about five years or so but it kind of just it kind of just blended into it it was never something that I was really sort of set out to do it was kind of um I enjoyed I enjoyed doing it you know through the time Mm. sort of doing the tree work being around sort of chainsaws and stuff like that and I kind of just sort of tried it out played around and just got really lucky with the opportunities that kind of led led forwards after that um with sort of you know, sort of where I stepped into and, and, the, and the people that I was doing work for at the time, you know, being lucky enough to sort of say, hey, you know, I, I, I can do that or I can make you some stuff for, for, for this sort of woodland walk thing. And uh, yeah, I just got really sort of lucky with that opportunity. And then it kind of just all rolled into place, you know. Crazy the, how the that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Right? That's cr- it's it, crazy how you can just was, like... It completely just, you know, I'd made, made a couple of small pieces um like a fish and 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 like a small bear um and we were working on this job big large site and and this guy was sort of the customer was kind of wanting uh, someone to do some carvings so me i was just kind of 
I was, I just said, yeah, yeah, sure, I, I can do that for you. Not really yeah. knowing what, I, you know, what yeah. I was stepping into and, and going on what I'd made before, you know. So, and uh, he wanted sort of a large, a large fisherman, sort of like a fifteen foot tall fisherman with a trout fish for this sort of <laughs> trout lake. Yeah, and you're like, you know, let's go. And I was like, yeah, no worries, I can do that. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, I was like, yeah, that's fine. I can do that. I can do that. So he asked me to make him sort of a smaller version. So I made a, I made a smaller version for him, and uh, he, he was happy. So then after that, I was like, yeah, fine, I'll, I'll make it. And sort of, must have been my third or fourth piece. I was doing this giant, you know, this giant fisherman, this giant yeah. commission, sort of thinking, what am I doing here? <laughs> sort of, you know, fully out of my debt. Um, and I, I completed that, luckily, yeah. So I got it all completed, and he was over the moon. So um, he just sort of said to me, look, make whatever you want, you know, and and just left me sort of in his woodland for two months, just kind of oh, making wow. anything I liked. Just, yeah, yeah. So it was just a really lucky opportunity. Um, and then from there, obviously, I was posting stuff on social media and Facebook and and, and sort of, you know, things people then sort of message you and say, oh, can, you know, you, can you make me one of those? And, and you sort of start off of, of there and just kind of rolled yeah just rolled from there really it was, it was crazy um it yeah and it just hasn't stopped though. since you know it's you, kind of it's awesome like you had that opportunity though being around the trees all the time on people's properties so like yeah it's amazing how if that guy didn't want to carving maybe you wouldn't have pursued it you know so it's cool how life yeah. can change that quick right yeah exactly that you know? I, yeah i'd be you know potentially a completely different situation you know and my, my path at them was was sort of to to carry on doing tree surgery and, and you know run my own business sort of eventually in that and, mm-hmm. and um yeah it just kind of just so happened that in the right areas at the right time I'd just gone and worked for another company and this was one of the first big jobs that I'd done for them and it kind of stepped into there and you know just kind of some mad some mad intervention from somewhere <laughs> it just kind of led me down this path you know of just yeah. uh, of doing these things and then um you know, just people that I met along the way, sort of the guy who owns this place, um, you know, my workshop and stuff. I think, I, you know, after that first that first year of doing the big fisherman and everything like that, um, I found it, found this place and um, got into here and, and he just bombarded me with, with, with work and clients and commissions and sort of everyone that would come up here because it's got sort of a working yard, you know. Yeah. Would pass my name on and then, you know, potential orders and stuff from there. So just kind of grew without me really sort of doing too much but the artwork you know and sort of uploading it and posting it, it kind mm-hmm. of just, just just sort of grew on its own sort of just you know running um all of commissions as well which I've been very lucky with the fact that I haven't had to sort of make too much if you know like sort of right. sit and, and, and try to and, sell yeah. yeah yeah sit and try to sell too much you know and in, in the early years I did a bit of it um at shows and stuff like that but it would always be so disheartening, you know, sometimes, you know. It's hard. It, it, yeah. So for like the first year of this show, it was really good. I was, I was, you know, every, most of my stuff was selling and, and uh, you know, I'll take more orders from there. And then the second year came and just that one year, you know, every show I went to, I was either losing or break yeah. even, you know. And, and you sort I know of, exactly what you're talking it's, about. It, <clears> it's, it's, it's so hard. hard, you know. It's so yeah. hard. And uh, I, I was working probably much like yourself and you're running yep. full-time tr- job you know you try to do evenings every weekend mm-hmm. anything that you can to, to to do what you can really um and then when you when you get to these shows and you spend so much time on doing these things and the things weren't selling or you know stuff like that you just kind of really disheartening it down yeah. you know because of that point through times um so I kind of just stopped doing that so much because the commissions were picking up and taking over I just Perfect. thought right you know what there's there's no point in putting myself through that you know I may as well just sort of sell the commissions if I've got them, you know, and just take mm-hmm. orders from there. Um, yeah. So yeah, no, it's just, and it's just been, been like that ever since. That's so cool. I, I did go through the same experiences that you did where you'd build all this inventory for a show. You'd go, you set up, like my setups took forever because it was like big, heavy. I do like, you know, big, heavy horror themed wood carvings. But, but back then I was doing things that I thought would sell to the general public because I knew people weren't like me, you know, like that lived near me. So I would do like outdoor carvings for like, you know, like a hunting show. And then I would do um, like like kayaking and paddling and canoeing stuff for like a show on the river, you know, like, so I was like designing towards the audience that the show was for. And it's like you said, get to get set up. But like you said, it can be disheartening because like your passion's not in those products maybe. And 
you're just making them to make them. So it, it's it's way more fun when you get those cool commissions coming in or like you design something yeah. on your own. Like it's so much more satisfying. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's kind of, it's, it's nice to be able to, I quite like the fact that I, I don't have to design too much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, people got to kind of come to me because it's mostly realism stuff and sort right. of people come to me with an idea as such. So it's, it's more so, and I quite like that. Um, I've never, I don't have an art background. I've, I've had no sort of art training. In, you, know, you just go on for it. All the drawing and stuff like that. So when it comes to design and stuff, I always really struggled with, yeah, with sort of, you know, knowing, knowing what to do, where to go, where to stop, you know, and how far to take it and stuff. So mm-hmm. I like the fact that people, you know, come to me with an idea and they say, we want this, this and this. And then I can sort of accumulate that together um, in a way sort of thing. Um, but yeah, mostly of the commission sort of where I'll do them at the workshop. It's always a preset plan. It's, it's, okay. um, where to go with it, which is nice. I, I, I like that. I don't, there's not too much of sort of kind of, oh, what, what should I do here? What's yeah. that? You know, sort of that, too, that thing. But you're bringing something you know, that's where it becomes tricky, away, which it? is really cool. So are you using like, do you have like reference photos next to you while you're carving the whole time or how, what's your process there? Yeah, mostly, my uh, mostly I just use pictures off my phone and my iPad and stuff like yeah. that, you know, multiple, just streams and streams of photos mm-hmm. that you've taken mm-hmm. at different angles, of different different animal you know and, and that's how it works because you can flip through so many right um and i was seeing the other day actually that, that I, I think it's google now that they've got the sort of 3d rendering now where they're in motion and you can spin them oh, you know, sort yeah. of an image yeah. you can click on an yep. image and yeah you can get yeah spin them and i just found it the other day another sculptor was telling me ella, ella fielding um and i've just seen it and that's such a cool thing because there's so many different you know angles that you've got to kind of look for when you're doing mm-hmm. that sort of 3d representation um yeah, I agree. yeah that's, so, that's neat. Yeah, it's, it's, I find it easier to see something in 3D rather than rather than to try and draw it as 3D, you mm-hmm. know? You've kind of been around this stuff for all your life. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, You've seen it. So you have an life. idea of how it should look. Uh, whether you've paid attention to it or not, you've got an idea of kind of how it should look. And it's a case of looking more in depth as to... You yeah. know where the shoulders should sit, where the muscles should sit, and and sort of, you know that that route. That is true. I, I think I talked about that with Danny Kissel a little bit of just like, you are taking in things your whole life that's inspiring you, and you're not even realizing it. Like you really that's, are yeah. visually looking at all of this stuff your every day. It's just you're not thinking yeah. about it as you're doing it. Exactly, exactly, and and this is where it comes to you. Kind of know what something should look like, right? You know, it's sort of you know if it, if one arm's longer than the other or something, you know, one one foot's out of shape or larger or smaller. It's mm-hmm. very easy to tell where you've kind of gone wrong, yeah. um, you know, in a way. Uh, but then sometimes you know it's just a case of when you put the eyes in, it's sort of one eye maybe set back further than the other one slightly. Yeah. You kind of look at it for ages thinking what's throwing it off and, <laughs> and you'll put it into a different light and, and then that will show you, you know? So it's kind of, yeah, it's, it's, it's just a lot of sitting and sort of realizing where you're going wrong from yeah. it. Stuff and to, you know, deterring back from there. The thing is so cool. I'm so it's, used yeah, to, no, it's, um, it's not. I'm used to a, more of a flat image for my kind of work. And I really do want to start going through dimensional yeah. stuff. So like, it's so fun to like, listen to you talk about it. Cause I'm just like, oh, see, this is why I want to kind of play in the 3d world a little bit. Cause you're creating these characters out there in life that people can walk around and, you know, they can interact yeah. with your art. It's pretty cool. I, I went to a, a park with my kids yesterday and they just had one big carving in the middle of the area. And it was just nice. Cause like you walk by and you're just like smiling at it. You're just like, Oh, that's oh, it, yeah. exactly that. You know, <laughs> these things they just they just add a nice touch to the area around you mm-hmm. as well. And and especially, you know, when you're doing them yourself and you've got a few home pieces, you know, you get to look at that every day. And I'll oh, yeah. pick out the problems that you'll remember for next time. <laughs> 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 or or look at it and just love it, you know, and embrace yeah. it. And uh, they're just a nice yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. the kind of thing, isn't it? You know, and I yeah. think that's how we improve a lot, is is you, you know, you see these things and you remember these things and you think, oh, I could have done that differently or I should have done that better. Or, oh, yeah. You know, and that's it's just a constant progression. Thing like I have a piece over here on my wall. It's like a, a Chucky. And there's a spot where I just wish I had yep. darkened. I just wish I had darkened it before I put the finish on it. <laughs> so I'm like, as you're saying that, I'm just sitting here staring at it like, yeah, I get it. 
because you do you you when you're staring at something you do learn how you could improve yeah exactly that and it shouldn't be seen as a you know you've got you, you kind of and you, you you'll see this you're not always fully a hundred percent happy with every piece because mm -hmm. like you say you wish you were darkened it or there may be that subtle little thing that you just couldn't change at the time up but i don't see that as being like a, a problem like nope. you know we beat ourselves up about it yeah. and stuff but i don't it's it should be used as a tool that's what that's what pushes us to be you know better mm -hmm. and to improve and into into pushing things further and, and you know and not always worrying about just getting the pro product out and and gone you know it's yeah. sort of improving it for yourself as well as the customer you know mm -hmm. no i agree i agree it, it does it drives you it gives you that extra push to get better because you're not satisfied yeah. yet <laughs> you know yeah, exactly that, you know, and yeah. you sort of, and it plays on your mind, it will sit on, sit on you, and you, mm -hmm. you know, you're thinking it's, it's that whole case of getting halfway through a project again and being like, no, I've gone wrong, you know, and then, <laughs> and then taking that to one side, and it happens, it still happens, and, and I think will always happen, because mm -hmm. it's just, you know, you, you, I don't think we're just as human nature we're never 100 percent satisfied with anything yeah. are we you know there's yeah. always something to be done differently something yeah. to improve um you know i've still got a huge amount to learn and a huge way to go i'm just starting to sort of use stains and paints a lot more now which i sort of really struggle with um right, yeah adding all you know and i don't know how yeah. you do it because your lines are so clean your lines are so clean every oh, time there's so many <laughs> different layers to the I, paint i do and a I find, ton of layers yeah yeah that's it. There's so many different layers and you would do one layer and then you skip over that line slightly and you're like, no. And then you've got to redo that little layer and it goes back into the same layer and you're like, no. And it just progresses from there. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I just find that sometimes I've just been doing like a tricolor Jack Russell and, uh, yeah. you know, it's sort of white, brown, two different colored browns and then sort of a beigey brown head. Um, and you, you, like I say, you, you do one bit on a pattern and, and you kind of skip over the line a little bit, you know, and stuff like that. And it just, it's this forever cycle of being like, like just little touches here and there. Just to fit. It's, I think the hardest part about um, painting yes. or carving is just knowing when it's done. Like, and it, that's with yeah. any kind of painting is it's so hard to know, like, when do, when should I stop? Because you can so overwork it so quickly. Exactly. And, and then be so sad because like, it might have looked amazing. And, and those final touches that you thought you should do just ruined it for you. <laughs> that is so true. It's so right. true. And and I used to find that for myself with the with the paints and the stains and stuff. For me, it was, you know, all about sort of the naturalness of the timber and the and the grain right. showing through and sort of the contours around the muscles and stuff like that. Um, and then when you start adding different stains, it sort of it would change it so much, like you say, and, yeah. and would kind of either for, for me, I felt like it would make it look slightly more cartoony in a way. You right. know, and, and that well, at the time wasn't really what I was going for. But now, now I'm doing it more and I'm using it more and stuff like that. I'm, I'm sort of loving the feeling that it's getting in. It does make it look more sort yeah. of the exchanging color between the patterns or, or, you know, the lightness of the head or anything like that. Are you using an airbrush or are you using a paintbrush? No, at the moment, I'm not. <laughs> it's one I was thing curious. that I really do need to get into is the airbrush. Yeah. Thing. Um, at the moment it's just it's just paintbrush and sort of wood stains um various different colors yeah yeah no it's it's, it's all it's all hand painted on uh, they're just having yeah. for some reason the, the compressors have always scared the life out of me i've had one for ages for like let two me years let me show you something which doesn't yeah <laughs> let me show you something one sec okay so you said compressors scare you this is yeah. my airbrush gun ah literally... see i've been thinking about those yes yeah. it plugs into it... um a little battery pack and that's it so this is the compressor. It's really neat. Uh, has it got a lot of, you know, and it runs for, for, for a while. Is it yeah. touched? Just... So the battery for, I think for this tool, Perfect. we'll do 35, 40 minutes, and then you just slap a new battery on it and Bro. then you go. Yeah, so just have a few batteries with you. But yeah, I like it. I just started using it. Um, I can send you a link for it too, so you can check it out. But they, they are in like the UK, because I know they've shared my stuff before over there, so. You should be able to get it. Locally. Yeah, no, because I, I need. I think I saw. Uh, who was it? Chainsaw. I think it was Chainsaw Jenna first using one of those. Does she have one? Okay, the little works tool airbrush guns. Yeah, they're awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, no, I definitely have to look into that because, like I say, I, I've never, I've never. Yeah, they look, look such a sensible piece of kit. Yeah. To use, you, yep. you know, you don't have to lug around this air compressor, and a lot of my stuff is, you know, what I couldn't do with a brush would be subtle touches. Like, mm -hmm. would be perfect for that for that brush. Yeah, um, exactly. So you could do like you could paint it on 
with a brush yeah. and then go in with a darker color or a lighter color just to add highlights. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, yeah and that would be perfect. So I'm definitely, that's, yeah, yeah. thank you for showing me that because I am going to actually go off after this and, and find, <laughs> one, find one. I was just one. thinking about that. I'm like, let me help him out. Sorry, I could go, I would totally just like FaceTime and talk painting if you ever wanted to let me know. But it's a lot of fun. It's, it's one of my favorite yeah, things. Yeah, honestly, I would love to. So yeah, no, it's the one thing that I've always sort of struggled with. And now that I've started doing the competitions and the shows, that I'm sort of trying to pick more people's brains and, and uh, you know, especially uh, James Elliott does a lot of airbrushing. There's a lot of airbrushing and stain. I don't know where you, you, you know. Oh yeah, he's um, on our, he's on yeah, our list James to Elliott. chat with. <laughs> he, uh, he does a lot and he's been trying to help me out a lot. With, yeah, yeah, he's an incredible, incredible artist and his, you know, so paintings talented. and stuff and the stains. And he, he was the guy that originally introduced me to Sabretooth with, with James. Oh, awesome. Um, he was sort of, yeah, he was sort of one of the first carvers that I ever sort of really spoke to. Um, you know, back when I was right in the early days of five, yeah, probably five years. And we just kind of randomly turned into pen pals. It was kind <laughs> of, I'd never met him. And like every day for three years, we were just chatting. chatting. Every day, you know, sort of, you know, agony arts, agony arts to each other and just helping each other out and, and, you know, pushing each other through competition as well, sort of in our own selves, you know, he'll produce a dog and I'll be like, man, I'm, I'm so jealous of that, you know, and I'll tell him that and I'm like, it's so good. And then I'll produce a dog and he'll say the same thing and be like, oh, look how you've done that. You know, and we've kind of just learned over each other. And it is yeah. this, this competition between each other, but it's, um, it's, a, it's a good kind of competition, you know, we're so happy yes. for everything that each other does and, and we look at each other's work and learn from each other's work and, and it works really nicely. Yeah, we have that in our maker community, like um, just like with like the woodworkers and things like that, where everybody just messages everybody and just asks for questions and picks their brains. Like, how are you using that tool? Hey, what kind of program are you to use? You know, like, and we just help each other out. So I yeah. love hearing that story about like you and James Elliott. Like, it, that's awesome. I love that it's it's living and yeah, breathing yeah. over here in the carving world. Yeah, yeah, exactly that, and it is, and 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 you know. The amount that you learn, especially now with going to the competitions and stuff, and and you know, you've got all these sort of big the legends of the carving world, sort of in the UK, sort of being there as well as as well as you know, sort of America, you know, they're starting to bring the internationals over again now. Um, so it's nice to learn tips and tricks off of, the, of off of those guys as well, because they've been doing yeah. it so long, and they pick up all these handy little things and these weird and wonderful little tools and you know, these weird and wonderful little ideas and what you can do. It's amazing the array of tools that people use when they're doing carvings. Like, like you were saying, like these- Yeah, and there's such a variety of tools of, of, of everything, isn't there? Mm -hmm. You know, there's, um, you know, from, you got such a range of sat and everyone uses different tools for their different techniques. You know, everyone right. will sort of mainly focus on their one, on their one tools for stuff. You know, I go heavy into sand and with things and, and really focus on sort of the whisper bits for the saber tooth. Yes. Um, to do all my sort of detailing in the eyes and stuff like that. Whereas people, other people run just solely off of the big die grinders with, you know, the huge coarse beats or, or, or fine bits and, and just, you know, sort of do it, do it that way. Um, and then like I say, some people won't go into sand and at all. It'll be, it'll be all sort of chainsaw smoothed and then flapped over with a, with a, you know, mm -hmm. flat brush. Um, and it's nice that whole variety. Everyone has their own different style. And I remember you and uh, I think it was Cami and I was the guys were having a conversation. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Was, was everyone was you, that's it. Everyone's style is noticeable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. You could have you know, the everyone same. Everyone has their own noticeable style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they all use them in their own different ways. And they're different. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone can has access to the same tools and the same equipment, but they just pick and choose of what they like to use their style of using right. things. You know, and everyone does something slightly different. And that person that does something slightly different to you may have a whole new technique that you've never seen right. or sort of ever really thought about. And, and you know, that, that helps, that helps massively um, just to learn that other side of where you are using tools and what you, you know, what you're doing with them and why you're doing it. With them. So um, how'd you get into the competitions? Did, were you asked? Uh, yeah. I, I, I never really, I was always too, uh, not nervous as such, but I never thought I'd really be truly ready for it. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I was like, no, I'm not good enough yet. I'm not quick enough. You know, my thing hasn't been ever been speed. It's kind of been just trying to trying to make it until I'm happy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, so we, it was James again, actually pushed me into the. <laughs> I like him. Me into the 
first one, which was like an online competition when all sort of COVID and stuff was happening. Mm-hmm. And we had like a online um, competition for the Living Heritage events, which sort of they run the English Open and the Sandringham Cup and all that over this awesome. way. So I got into it originally through there. And then the show started back up. And again, I was like, I'm probably not going to do it. I'm probably not going to do it. You know, it's sort of all, <laughs> all these big names. And, uh, right. You know, I'm going to be, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just not quick enough. I won't mm-hmm. finish my piece. Won't be good enough. You know, all these doubts. That we, oh, yeah, we, we all we have, have sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Exactly, exactly. And and uh, I think it was James who messaged Mark up. Was sort of, he organises all the carvers together. So any, anything to do with the shows is is Mark up. Any questions, queries, you just go to him. He's a great him. guy lovely lovely guy and um i think james messaged him and said mike wants to get involved message him <laughs> and i sort of you know and, and mark messaged me and sort of we started chatting and i was like okay fine yeah i'll, I'll, I'll come in you know yeah I'm, I'm excited i was nervous and he sort of talked me through it and was like no you know everyone's different levels you know mm-hmm. if you don't get it finished you know it's no drama it's no problem it's uh you know and it and it was nice and the first show i did it just the community, the environment, the you know, like-minded yeah. people and stuff. It's mm-hmm. a completely different world, you know. And everyone comes from different backgrounds, from from different worlds. Of, you know, from fine artists, to teachers, to, to tree surgeons. To you can be anyone, anyone, yeah. and anything to, to to jump in and start. As long as you know how to use a chainsaw, you're sort of kind of well away halfway there. Right. Um, yeah. So it, it was just, and it's just nice to, like I say, all these people that you've sort of seen and, and looked up to and followed their work. Yeah. And, you know, <laughs> And uh, to you know, be try around to them. You know, had, that's it, yeah, and had conversations with and stuff. And you're finally like, oh, I can meet these people. And that was the first time I'd met James as well after like three years was, was at this it's show. So exciting. So, yeah, which was cool. And, you know, every, every, a lot of big names, like I say, like, oh, like, and it was just, yeah, after you get past the whole the aura of being like in this world of legends, <laughs> you know, in, in our sort of community. Um, yeah, it's, it's like, then you can calm down and be like, right, get to it. The beauty was I was noticing people kind of changing their plan and changing their ideas like the, the night before and stuff of what they're originally going to do because you don't know what piece of timber you're going to get what size it's going to be um, right. you do like a potluck draw and uh yeah so you, you kind of you get that and then you, you weigh up your options there and then sort of on the on the, on the day really oh, you come up awesome. with a plan and it might not work yeah it might not work and luckily on the, the first show i did i managed to get a huge piece of timber to do um the rearing horse uh, Okay, that um, giant horse. You saw that. Oh yeah, I did see it, and it, it, it yeah, it yeah. was giant. So yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That's it. So I just got. I, I managed to luckily have this this huge piece of timber that you know was big enough to fit all the horses in. All I had to do was just attach sort of the tops of the ears, luckily, just to give it that bit of extra room. And uh, yeah, managed managed to do it. And you, you never know. No one's you know you, you don't work that fast in a normal pace. No, it's kind of <laughs> you know it's kind of. You know, you're on the saws flat out sort of eight, ten hours a day for sort of two days straight. And then you know, you've got a five hour day and speed carvings in between, which at the time I, I didn't get involved in just because I'm too panicky about finishing my piece, really. <laughs> I would have been. Yeah, especially to being new to it, like adding yeah. another item to carve or multiple items to carve in between. <laughs> Guys and girls that just, you know, they're creating these astonishing yeah. pieces. Plus, they're doing six speed carvings in between that. Plus, they're mooching off to go and have some food and stuff. Yeah. And you're like, how are you doing this? How are you this fast? You know, and, and it's just over the years of building it up and just knowing and being sure of your cuts and, and where to go with everything and then sort of having a plan in your head. But like I say, you know, drawing it up, coming with design and then, and then just being so sure of your cuts. There's no, there's no room to really think too much. Mm. Yeah, I, and, I can imagine. You know, if a problem comes up, you've got a rock pocket. Yeah, you know, you've got a rock pocket or a big split or a big crack. You don't get to change your timber. Right. You, you know, you, you yeah, you either work around it or you fill and fix it um, and stuff like that. So it is all, I mean, that is what chainsaw carving is. is, is and same with most arts, is it's coming up with problems. Yeah, finding you, a solution. You know, working your way around problems come up because it's all natural. Yeah. Yeah. That is it. Finding the solution straight on the spot and um, and just working your way around it, whichever ways that you can. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and 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 sort of working with it and just working with it, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can't get too stressed or, or, or worried that this isn't this isn't working. Um, 
you know, because every piece, even in commissions with, with whatever, it could be the cleanest piece of timber in the world, but you never know what's going to happen mm -hmm. halfway through the project. You know, you could be making an ear and the ear, the end of the ear pops off just because <laughs> right. you know, they are aggressive tools to be using. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, you just you kind of just work around, work around the, 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 the problems that come up, you know. Um, right and i think that's sort of a huge skill that getting too worried the first plan i like just yeah. just do it yeah. yeah is that something that had uh you had to take time to build that skill or would you are you always kind of like that already before like if you come upon something you've always been like all right i can fix this i think or it I can was do that yeah i think i've been very i've always been very, very well if someone else can do that i can do that Mm -hmm. um not so much in an arrogance way more no, so no. like just confidence in, in that you can do it intrigued way sort of mm -hmm. yeah 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 it's sort sort of an intrigued way of like how does that work how do how do they do that and just by watching watching things and and um but then yeah it was definitely a developed skill because you soon realize as you start that there will be all these problems crop mm -hmm. up for randomly mm -hmm. you know sort of and, and you just next day you know one day it's completely fine you come to it the next day and where it's got height in the sun there could be one big sheer crack for it and stuff like that and you're like right so that needs fixing or or replacing or, or yeah. whatever else um so yeah I, I think it's always it's been a developed a developed tool or skill um mm -hmm. just because it's kind of what you, you you just have to do it yeah you just have to do it yeah and it's it's just think finding alternative ways to to be like, right, yeah, that 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 will work. That will fix that, or you know, um, use this way to be able to get an on straight cut, sort of and things like that for the bases. Yeah, and, um, yeah it's, it just it's something that just kind of you just have to do. It's kind of a skill that develops on its own. If you know what I mean? Yeah. No, absolutely. Have you always used chainsaws? Like just growing up? Like how did you get introduced to the chainsaw? Um, it was. I I'd never oh, I was fourteen I think it was I, I did a, like a work experience with one of my neighbours who was a tree surgeon um, but before, previous to that I had a, I had a tree surgeon that came and did some work in our garden and and I loved it I was I was I was young I must have been totally intrigued at the time. and he gave me a sort of, he gave me a, yeah and I, you know you're obviously in awe of these people sort of mm -hmm. climbing into trees and stuff and he gave me one of these old forestry helmets and it had <laughs> headphones and yeah and a thingy and he gave it to me and that was it i was like that's it you know i want to be, <laughs> be a tree surgeon i want to be doing this for the rest of my life you know yeah. um and it just so happened that one of our other neighbors you know sort of he he was a tree surgeon and um yeah he took me on when i was 14 just as a work experience thing for like a week that's so cool and then after that i he was like, no, if you want to come, if you want to come and do Saturday work with us and, and whatever, you know, I wasn't using saws or anything then, but mm -hmm. just sort of laboring and running around. He was like, yeah, cool. So then since then, every Saturday I was working with him, every school holidays I was working with him, every, you know, everything yeah. I could do, basically, I, I, I was there. Um, <clears throat> and then, you know, stepped forward to go to college, went to college um, and, and learned tree surgery, got, got my qualifications and all that mm -hmm. business. And, and then, you know, carried on just working life from there so I kind of I kind of just yeah I'd always been kind of around it well since I was young I'd been yeah around definitely it. Um, and I yeah and it was lucky enough you know going to college and stuff I I, I had a knowledge of the industry beforehand mm -hmm. as well and, and the guy that took me on was you know super 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 lovely guy you know really knowledgeable cared so much about the work he was doing in the trees and keeping mm -hmm. the clients happy um you know nothing was too much of a problem if it was like can you do that little extra bit while we're there um you sound like a and great it just mentor. Gave me a, yeah really good mentor it gave me a good basis of, of you know but you're there for the client at the end of the day as mm -hmm. well as you know it's your own thing it's your own artwork and it's your own job but you know you're there for the client and and the main thing is as long as they're happy yeah that's great to um, find, to so find yeah anyway going so back I, I just kind of yeah, I stepped into there, I went to tree surgery. Um, yeah, yeah. And so the only two jobs I've ever had is, is tree surgery and chainsaw carving, you know? It's yeah. kind of, so it's, it's, it's sort of always been involved in it, but I kind of threw myself into it straight away. You know, I fell in love with the trees and the chainsaws and, and that. And it just, it just so happened that that kind of progressed after quite a few years of, um, yeah, that it progressed into chainsaw carving. Um, and, but my first love of actual carving was probably while i was in college we used to make these toadstools 
okay. you know, sort of like the mushroom okay. sort of toes and mm-hmm. stuff. We used to have an open day and, and all, 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 the, all the college kids that, you know, that were on the course would, uh, would make these toad stools and, you know, we'd sell them for sort of 10 pound on the, on the day. And streams and streams of them were selling, you know, between 10 of us, there must've been, you know, near a hundred made. And they were just selling and selling and selling and selling. And I did that for two years in a row. And I was I'm kind of good at this. You know, I love yeah. this. This is nice. Um, it's, it's good fun to have, you know. So that was sort of my first big love of it. And then while doing the trees and stuff, I, I made like the old throne, like the old chair out of the stump mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You know, but so yeah, always you kind play. of had it. Yeah, always got to have a play and, and just, you know, it was nice. To, yeah, always kind of just had a love for it that I would think, yeah, this could could be something that I just want to play around with and stuff and then it was just after that it was just a lot of research and into tools techniques mm-hmm. you know the different bars because when you don't know and you don't want to ask questions and stuff it's so hard to know because of, you know just the chainsaw bars and the different tips you know there's right. so many different bits of chains so many different types of chain so many different saws that you could be running all these things on as well mm-hmm. um so I just spent months just researching and researching and researching and researching and researching um, I love uh, hearing that because it shows your passion. Kind of, yeah, that's you, it. I believe anything that is, is something yeah. that anyone can do. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you've just got you just got to have this passion for it, this love for it, and and I think that there's so many artists and so many different mediums in the world that it just shows that you know it doesn't have to be a base skill that you have. It doesn't right. have to be exactly a talent like that people describe as a talent as a singer or a runner. It doesn't have to be anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it, it's just you have a passion for it. And you just right. follow your love and, you know, you go into two sides. You either go for your realism way or you mm-hmm. go to your own designs, and your own abstractness and, and your own quirkiness if, of your love, you know, and, and, you know, your life. So you go down that route and it's all of it subjective. All of it's mm-hmm. exactly what you want it to be. Yeah. yeah. Which is, which is, which is, yeah, the beauty of it really. Yeah, um, I totally agree. I, think that it's, I, don't, I don't think it's shown too much enough as well and I'm, I'm bad for this as well but i wanted to start is, is showing more that not everyone starts as this absolute you know crazy person that can make all these mad sculptures it just doesn't happen you just got yeah. to have a want and a, and a jump for it you know and just think you know what i can do this i will do this and i'll do it yeah. to, as good as i can do well it speaks to um to you taking on that very large commission that you did too you know like you you had done some small things and somebody threw it out to you and you're just like you knew you wanted that job when they were mentioning it you were like yeah I can do that yeah so like it's just passion it really is like that's gonna drive you forward to take on like those big leaps to to do those big things that can like pivot your life because that's what you did you totally pivoted your life into a yeah. whole new career path with that that one job yeah yeah exactly exactly and these these little things I think you've got to, you've got to take these jumps in life you know mm-hmm. yeah. you've got to you've got to just think do you know what I can do it you know mm-hmm. or I will do it it may take me months and months and months to even finish this one piece but it will be done and it exactly will, you know you know it's not all about sort of rushing for speed and getting you know get this order out get this job sorted and, and it's cost me a lot of problems in the top past don't get me wrong <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's kind of for me, I, I just, I just think that I, I like to try and you know get improve everything every time, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think that that that's just been my drive. It's just been you know like, and it could be something as simple as a fox or an owl or something yeah. small. But you look at a picture again, just be like, you know what? I'm just gonna have another relook. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, you knock out your own style quickly. Yeah, you're just gonna have, and you're like, oh, I've been missing all that, or I've been missing this, or I haven't included that, or. You know, these sit back further and stuff. It's, it's. Um, I think it's a forever just a learning, a learning mm-hmm. curve, like you say. And I think that's what keeps the passion in it is that it, it bewilders you every day because you're learning something new. You, mm-hmm. you know, um, so finally, I don't really. It's kind of like imposter syndrome. I don't really consider myself to be an artist as such. I'm kind of. I, I know you don't, because because when I said artist, so you're like, well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I just I don't because I've never you know. I'm not, I see artists as, as these people like, that can draw and paint and these crazy stuff and have these mad designs <laughs> and can come up with these ideas off their head. Let Whereas me tell you why me. you're I'm an artist. Going. Because <laughs> it tortures you a little bit inside. Every time you look at a piece and you know that you can improve, that is just that line when you said it. I was like, yeah, he's an artist. You know what I mean? Like, 
because they always yep. say like an artist is tortured it's it's you're just torturing yourself like that's our torture is this that we know we could be better and you want to keep improving keep trying that. Yeah. yeah so yeah, like yeah, yeah and that is <laughs> you're 100 percent an it. artist you just got to get that used to it. the name and, and it is torturous and i don't <laughs> yeah. think you know no matter how long you do it no matter you know from, from doing the shows and meeting people that have been doing it 15 20 years and stuff no matter how long you do it it's still torturous mm -hmm. it's still this thing that will ever be there picking at you this this unsurety this mm -hmm. kind of yeah this this want to improve this want to do whatever you're doing and and even if it is your own design and you follow out this whole design of everything that you want to do at the end of it you'll still look at it and go well i could have done that twist better yeah. Yeah. or you know something or anything it's a little you know, uneven it's, it's over here always, i think it'll always be there <laughs> mm -hmm. but again like i said earlier that should that should not be seen as a bad thing it should be always seen as a kind of tool like, uh, you know, that's that's your highest tool that you, you want to push and yeah. you can see your faults and you see where you should improve um, in things. And, you, should, you know, you should be pushing to improve, I think, for your own peace of mind as well yeah. as. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you'll be a little less tortured that next time. You yeah, something. yeah, like, yeah. You're like, oh, yeah, I, exactly that. I actually nailed yeah. it this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's, it, that's, that's, oh, it's such a strange thing. It's such a rare thing that, kind of comes up as an artist where you mm -hmm. kind of say oh, I've nailed it this time you know yeah. as, as someone who does things you know it's such a rare thing that comes up mm -hmm. you're always sort of happy and you're always you know chuffed with what you do because that's what you try and do you know you wouldn't give yeah. it to a customer or a client otherwise um but there's always that li little niggling thing that will just be you know I, I, I will still always do it now I think it's yeah just always there it is yeah no I get it I totally get it so um, when I was scrolling your page, I had noticed that you got the whisper burrs a little bit earlier than everybody else. So I think Jody had you test them. So that's pretty awesome. I, that's really yeah. cool. And we were talking about them the other day, yeah. um, how awesome yeah. those burrs are and how, like, I don't know how you feel about it, but we feel like it takes almost as equal amount as like their highest grit burr. Like it just takes the material off it's pretty awesome yeah yeah oh, i think okay. it does i think it's yeah like, that's 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 kind of what you know the i've since getting the sort of i think jody sent me a whisper bud bit and, and mm -hmm. you know the, a t-shirt and some other bits which is really cool and that's how so that's a good thing about jody she supports everyone massively mm -hmm. you know nothing's too big or anything it's kind of it's like you, you know you say or you approach and stuff and that you say you want to try to whisper bits out it's like well here you go try them yeah you know and it's, yeah. it's i was just yeah, saying if she you know, sees and, that you're a talent that and, you know and, she'll go for it she'll send you that stuff if she knows that exactly yeah. and that's a huge thing for a, for a big company to have is um you know because they are saber to themselves uh, uh, even though it may be only in a small warehouse and you have sort of the two different sides and stuff yep. In our industry as a wood carving world, they're one of the biggest names out there. Yes, they are. You know, everyone yep. knows them and everyone stuff like that. And to have a company of that size and that stature, um, embrace it and share your work and constantly be saying, yeah, well done. And, you know, they're posting yeah. pictures and stuff and all that. To have that sort of slight back in um, makes a huge difference because, you know, there's companies that, you know, they won't share your stuff out there or anything like that. You yeah. may share theirs, but they won't. All. No, I get it. You know, whereas Sabretooth have always it's about been, community been great and it, it, you don't have to include all that's it and it doesn't always have to be their burrs included in the picture or anything no. like that it's, yep. it's just your art it's the love of the art it's the mm -hmm. love of the thing that you're making with those tools you know right um so yeah sorry going back to yeah jody sent me the bud burr the whisper bit and i was i was using that for a long time um and it's i think they're perfect for everything that you need um yeah. Once you've got further far enough in the chainsaw, right. sort of like you say, they take out more than enough wood at that time. They leave it a nice smooth surface and everything. Uh, and then, so after the bud bit, I had that for a little while, and I've still got that. I've still got that, and it's still. Yeah. This is the thing. They last so they long. They last forever. Well. They, <laughs> they last forever. <laughs> they yeah. last forever. They yeah. last so long. Um, and then I got the eye cutter bits. Mm -hmm. I got the eye cutter bits, and that bit is just yeah. Honestly, it's it's perfect. For I, I use it for you know, most really of my cool. detailing is only a small amount just in the eyes and the nose you know, mm -hmm. the rest is being sanded out and stuff but to be able to get those corners of the eyes and that roundness and you know pull back to the side and right. stuff that the whisper bit's just perfect for it you know they're, they're not jumpy they don't skip around anywhere mm -hmm. they just yeah. um and yeah they just work so well and I, I don't use sort of the other fine bits or anything like that because 
you know, most of the stuff, I can get the impression of the saw, right. you know, where it needs right. to be in between the claws and stuff. And then with just that little eye cut bit, you put in the thin line in between. Um, right. And that's it. That's all it needs, you know, mm-hmm. and it's sort of, as long as you can get those main, those main features out of a piece. Right. And to, to, to look intense, like the eyes, the nose, or, or, you know, if you've got hands and such, those hands to look kind of all right. The rest can be subjective a huge amount. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I think it just, yeah, it works. It works perfectly. And the, the saber tooth bits are just, they're just ideal for it. They're everything that you need. You know, at the, at the start, I was sort of running the other little bits that you get. And mm-hmm. you think, oh, you know, the saber bit, I think it was at the time I was like, the saber bits, they can't be that much better. They can't, but, you know, I've, I've got these, these are running well, you see. So I think <laughs> yeah. it was, I think, and I think it was, you know, and you're just burning through bits of wood and it's mm-hmm. like, you know, these are, these are the best that I can do sort of thing, you know, and you're just smashing through pieces of wood. Um, and I think it was James that said to me, you know, try these saber bits. You know, he was making a lot of the videos at the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and game changer absolutely changed my life. Yeah. Like, you, you wouldn't use anything else. Now it's kind of, yeah. And, and the variety of it as well for different, yes. different patterns. They you have know, such like a variety of shapes. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And they all work kind of perfectly for everything that you kind of use them, need mm-hmm. them for. I'm almost found... I'll, I'll use a certain bit for a different area. And I'm like, that is kind of been perfectly designed for that one that little one. section. And like, how do they know that? Just the shape <laughs> to be, you know, it's, sorry, we dropped out for a we second. Did, we did, that's okay. No, that's totally fine. I was just saying, uh, Jody and I were talking about exactly what you were talking about uh, the other day about like, you'll get a tool and say they give you those free bits that, that come with it. You just might as well just, toss them in the trash <laughs> like when you get used to using yeah. the saber tooth burrs like those things literally are like oh don't waste my time let me just empty out this chamber <laughs> and yeah. put my burrs in yeah, there yeah. because yeah yeah once exactly you've tried that. it yeah you, you just once once you've used them there is no point in going back because you yeah. just you waste so much time you pay for this tiny thing that's going to last you for five years you know? mm-hmm. <laughs> just just by wire brushing out the grooves right it's sort of um yeah, it's, it, they're just they're just perfectly designed, and perfectly made for what they need to be need to be used for. With yeah. such a medium variety as well, through through everything you know, listening to sort of and how people use them all in different ways, shapes or forms. Like you say, sort of the donut discs and stuff, yeah. using to just put impressions into into the sides of stuff, and where mm-hmm. you know Cami goes down and uses it so fully into sort of shaping all this. Oh stuff. yeah, um, yeah. So they're just they're just perfectly designed for what they are. I think it's funny because like people um, probably think we're just, crazy yeah. for loving them so much, but it's like once you've tried it, <laughs> you understand. That, that <laughs> you know? once you've tried it and it saved you all that effort yeah. <laughs> and you know, and and it's so perfectly that it just scrapes everything out so quickly and rapidly, you're like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. You know, it just is it is a complete game changer. There's no yeah. other way of saying it. You yeah. know, it, it's a complete game game changer. Your whole technique, your whole skill everything changes that's what i found is a different you know the different tools that i'll start using especially mm-hmm. with the saber tooth bits of being able to get the realism in the eyes and stuff right you know the more the the, the more you use them obviously you're just improving constantly and it, and it changes your game from switching onto those you know you just step up onto a hole you haven't got all these right. burnt eyes in place and and kind of right you weren't intending to stay in that piece but now you have to yeah yeah exactly <laughs> that because then you can't it's all burnt and you've either got to sand it off again or whatever and then you <laughs> haven't got the impression again yeah. then you burn it again Mm-hmm. But it's just yeah, and and they're just <laughs> the, the table tooth bits are just you don't have any of that, you know. I don't know. It's, it's obviously the way that the coating is and everything like that. It just it's just perfect for it. Yeah, no, I I love it. I mean, obviously, I love them. I, I wanted to work with them so bad. I'm like, can I do a podcast for you? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, please. but well, this is this is the thing. This, this podcast is also incredible because they're sharing so you know sharing so many people's work. You know yourself yeah. on. On the favor two page, it's constant. That's so a why not? You, you're one of the bigger names, you know, out there. Yeah. So why not? Why not have everyone come together and, and have a chat and and other people that maybe start and can see that you don't have to be perfect. Yeah, don't. Not everything that happens how it's planned out to be. It's you know, and it's not all these different ideas from from different worlds to kind mm-hmm. of come together and say you know, 
being an artist is hard. <laughs> it's, it's it kind is. Of, everyone thinks, what a beautiful job. You know, this is the nicest thing ever. You get to <laughs> kind of be free and do what you want. Here. It's like, I am not free. I am a slave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a slave to myself, you know. But yeah. it's like you say, this talk to the artist yeah. thing. Yeah. Um, and it kind of takes a little while to get around that. And I think just say to yourself, you know, it is a tool. I am tortured, but this is where I'm improving. And this mm -hmm. is how I'm improving. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Dude, it's been really fun hanging out with you and getting to know you, by the way. Like, I yeah, know no, you too. I didn't do an official introduction when we started. I kind of just started chatting. But I always feel like that is so <laughs> much more helpful to kind of just, like, start a conversation than do weird introductions. Yeah, I, I fully agree. Like, it's nice. Like I said to you the other day, the four are nice because it's comfortable. It's, it's You are just having a conversation mm -hmm. with another maker, someone mm -hmm. who understands it and gets it, you know, yeah. which, is, which is the beauty of it. And everyone can be kind of a bit calmer and a bit freer into what they're saying and stuff you know yeah you get the true insight of a, of the people you know it's, it's nice I agree I agree and, and and I'm I'm really like like you said it's I, I'm having a lot of fun highlighting all of you amazing carvers out there that I don't think people would know more than just the photo or just you know a video of your yeah. artwork it's taking it to that next level and and getting people to know the artists that they're watching and seeing and maybe that they're trying to become like you know to emulate to grow towards like i think it's hopefully going to be very inspiring yeah. to a lot of people yeah i think 100 percent will be i think it definitely definitely will be you know and i think it's um it's something you say and just in inspire everyone else and people trying to start or you know people coming mm -hmm. up it's uh yeah it's a nice thing and i think um it, it doesn't it doesn't happen enough of people yeah. sort of sharing their failures or their journey and stuff like that like i say i'm bad for it as well and i want to really start doing a bit more and doing a bit more tutorials with, with people to be, you know, sort of, this is how this, you know, this works or I'm showing through this way and, you know, different mm -hmm. techniques because it takes a while to pick up. And yeah, um, if you don't, it, it can, you know, using a saw in a different direction on a, on a, on a carving will bring it smoother than using it in a different direction, you know, so you're doing having to do less flapping or less oh, sort of sanding. People would probably die if you started teaching a little bit and you're like on reels or something. Yeah, like, that's they what would I'm thinking. I'm gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, and, and yeah. I'm hoping that, that that's what I really want to start doing. It's just because, like I say, I think we share so much, and in the beauty of of the carving world and the woodworking world, mm -hmm. that you know everything does look so great. Whereas there's no sort of beginning as being yeah. as being like these people started from here, yeah. you know, and 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 kind of it, it, it starts somewhere and has to start yeah. somewhere. So. You may as well keep going at the time, you know, yeah. don't be disheartened in any <laughs> shape or form because things aren't working out your way or whatever else, you know. Um, and it's nice, and it's nice. And then it's also nice to see the bigger carvers to push towards. Mm -hmm. you know, we've just, um, I've just gotten into Titan Chainsaw Carving, um, yeah. the group. Yeah, like, yeah, um, I saw them. The support they give to their artists. like I, Again, that's it, yeah. yeah. And that's yeah. a big thing for, for, for Matt is, um, is the support and the smaller people, you know, the sort of smaller artists as well mm -hmm. as the bigger artists and, and everyone else, and the same as you guys, anyone sort of shares yep. their work and tags them in it, try and tag them too. But it's, it's nice to get sort of a group of carvers together mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we all have sort of the same intentions. We all have sort of the same ideas and we're eventually going to want to, join sort of projects together and do some larger scale projects and just just be like look how look how mad cancel carving can be look how mm -hmm. look how crazy this world can be and where it can put you to and, and stuff like that yeah exactly there there is a community there is a world but i think it just has to be broadcasted a bit more and shown yeah yeah you know? definitely definitely 100 percent. and and the community is one of the main things the main beauty of woodworking is mm -hmm. the community you know you have friends all around the world that yeah you could potentially like say you know say tomorrow you would come over to the uk and, and you would come you know stay oh, with yeah. us and there's other other people you know and stuff like that and if i went to america you know i'd pop out there come and, on and, over and see <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly and, yeah. and that's it you know i've been invited by jake swanson and stuff to go out there eventually and, and um brian melton's another carver that oh. i'd love to go out and meet over in nashville um so yeah it's, it, it gives you this time community around the world so you don't feel kind of isolated in a way yeah. if you know what I mean I think it's it's, it's uh, actually yeah, very it's, unique. it's a lovely thing the community yeah I feel like um carving is one of those things that is very much worldwide appreciated you know what I mean like it's it goes back yeah. to old times like ancient times it's an old school craft and I think it's really cool because 
saber tooth sells across the world too like they don't yeah it's not just in america they go everywhere so it is neat everywhere. it is different and, and every corner of the world is filled with, like you say with, with woodworkers and stuff mm-hmm. so why why not make that community yeah sort of broadcast it like you say why not why yeah. not spread that community out further and get some more people involved and you know maybe this podcast or you know we'll push some people to to get involved i'm and hoping build. so you know, I'm going to take that jump. I believe everyone should know. Everyone should have, everyone should have something fun that they want to do, whether it be pottery, clay, you know, painting, mm-hmm. metalwork, anything. That even if it is just a hobby, right? You know, these things are so accessible now. They're so yes. accessible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just that's it. Express yourself a little bit into that, and and you know, it's a beautiful thing to be able to disappear into it and not mm-hmm. worry. It's you get so so involved and so zoned in that you forget about everything else that's going on you know and kind yep. of going mm. in that evening to do that work isn't you know and just, or whether it be full time or whether you're just playing around I think everyone you know whatever that medium or they feel like they want to be trying go out and try it go out and do it totally agree you know there's, yeah. there, there's no stopping you there's no reason why you can't do it you don't have to sell everything and anything. You may as well just keep them for yourself if you want to, mm-hmm. you know, up until that point and just keep it as a hobby. But whatever it is, I think you know, express yourself and pour it into that piece in, in any way. I love that. That little ending there too, is that you don't have to sell it. You can just make it for yourself. You can make it to give it away. Just make yeah. something like just take yeah, a moment exactly. and make something. Just, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Make something, whether it just sit on your shelf and you know whatever size anything mm-hmm. make something so you can look at every dance i'm proud of that or look at this yeah. small thing that i did you know yeah. and it's 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 a beautiful thing so it's, it's, a, it's a lovely thing to to have that and i think you know, a lot of people should really try and do their hobby you know as such mm-hmm. yeah i think it is yeah. important to have a hobby and i don't think enough people dive into things maybe they are afraid they won't be good at it or something but like I think it is very important to have a hobby yeah yeah and that that's a huge thing is it's like you just said is people are people get nervous that they may not be good at this or they mm-hmm. may not be able to do that or or why would I start that now what a, what a strange thing to be doing do you know what I mean yeah but yep. it doesn't have to be that you, it's it's freeing it's freeing to to go and do that you want to go out in the world and get a telescope and look at the stars go and do that you want to mm-hmm. you know go and make make an art piece go and do that whatever you feel in your life is going to make you that little bit sort of happier in what you're yeah. doing go and do it and you never know where it may take you i was 35 when i started with my hand routered signs this doesn't matter just pick it up whenever you want like, like just go for it yeah exactly and and being you know like I say with saber tooth and stuff it's all accessible you know mm-hmm. You, you've got you, whatever sort of hand tool you want, put your saber tooth bit in it, and away you go. You can start yeah, exactly. making your signs and impressions and funky textured boards that may just be a wall sign, yeah. you know, or a wall black, and, and, and you've got swells in it. But that thing is is your thing, you know, that's what mm-hmm. you, you're, you're sort of, you know, it's nice to do it that way, and, it's, and it should be. And I think people should be more sort of comfortable in themselves with saying, yeah. you know, I'm going to do this and whether I sell it or not, whether people like it or not, it's, it's what I want to do. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. It's what's burning inside of me that I need to get out. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> that sort of thing. yeah. Yep. Yep. Well, all right. I love that. I love that's our ending to the show because that's just so freaking beautiful. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you so much for coming out. I wish we had better internet, internet but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> We did an yeah, outstanding know, job navigating it through it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully the audio picks up and sounds not too bad for it either. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. At least the audio was kind of running if the picture froze, you know? <laughs> it's been lovely. It's been nice yeah. to have a chat. It is, yeah. And this is like, my husband laughed at me because like I'm doing two podcasts right now. And he's yeah. like, does it get in your way? I'm like, this is like my time to like breathe. Like, talking to like you said earlier like-minded people it's just so amazing and it's like good therapy for myself and hopefully for you guys too to be able to share things like that and 
it's not often that you can talk to somebody who's interested in the same thing as you are, you know, so it's like an exciting time. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. It is. It's kind of invigorating to be able to sort of, as you say, just offload the things that have kind of been, you know. On your mind, yeah. <laughs> yeah, on your mind about stuff. It's yeah. like, this thing's hard or this thing's hard. Or, you know, people should remember not to do that and stuff. It's nice mm-hmm. to, like you say, speak to like-minded people and just, yeah. and just put the world to rights in a little bit through the carbon world. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I can't wait to chat more. If you ever want to do a live while you're painting, let me know. And I can always go on the Sabretooth page and we can talk painting. So Yeah, that would be cool. I would yeah. love that. Yeah, 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 yeah let yeah, me know. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. I would cool. love that. No, it's been fun to meet you, Final too. Yes, you too. It's been fun following along. I hope you have a great day. Yeah, yeah you too, too. Yeah. Great to speak to you. You too. I'll see Thank you later. You're Bye-bye. welcome. Bye. All right, I hope you enjoyed getting to know Mike. He was a lot of fun and it was really nice chatting to him about like just the torture in which we put ourselves through as artists. But it's all in like, you know, it's for good things. It's it's to push us, it's to drive us. And, you know, we wanna always be the best that we can be with our craft. So it it was great to chat with him about that and just like learn about his passion. I was super jealous that he only had two jobs, both awesome jobs in his life. Whereas, you know, a lot of us take a long time to get to where we want to be in our, you know, our future. So congrats for him for finding that at such a young age at 14, knowing what you want to do. So we want to talk about the AAW Wood Turning Symposium. And that is in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And it's this weekend. It's on June 23rd to the 26th. If you're interested, it is a three day event which is just going to be packed full of all kinds of action and it is there to enrich your wood turning experience we do have some vendors there mdi wood carving supply will be there with a full catalog of all of our burrs and there also is going to be a um airbrush wood he's going to have a display of all of our two inch wheels so check out airbrush and wood and check out mdi wood carver supply if you're going to be making it there otherwise just want to say have a great day and keep on carving